Hello, Salam Sejahtera. So today, we are going to discuss about the arithmetic treatments algorithms uh, in this ALS course. Uh, this is a, an updated version. Uh, so you will get the latest update of the ALS algorithm. So these are the objective. You are expected able to manage the pulseless arrest and uh, the Brady arrhythmia and the tachy arrhythmia. So when we say cardiac arrest, what we mean what we meant are VF, VT, PA and asystole. An example, let's say a patient come to you with unresponsiveness. So you initiate BLS. How you initiate BLS? Yes, your DRS A B C D. And you assess the danger. You tap the patient's shoulder. Hello, hello. Are you okay? If patient is not responding, you shout for help. You open the airway. You scan for breathing. If there's no breathing, it, it equals to cardiac arrest, and you start CPR chest compression. Then when the helps come. So you attach the cardiac monitor and you ask your assistant who is doing CPR to stop because you want to analyze the rhythm. Let's say now the rhythm is asystole. So you continue CPR. You do everything in the within the two minutes time. When we say everything, we mean the IV access and you give the adrenaline uh, every three to five minutes but I prefer you give a standard order one milligram of adrenaline every three minutes and then you emphasize on the high quality CPR for two minutes then when two minutes up you stop chest compression you feel for the pulse analyze the rhythm and the rhythm still show asystole. You continue your CPR and you treat the reversible causes. The question is, when you should intubate the patient? So in non-shockable, meaning PA or asystole, you intubate the patient as early as possible. Meaning once you establish the diagnosis of asystole, yeah, you uh, ready the IV access, eh? you give adrenaline and at the same time you intubate the patient. Then after the subsequent 2 minutes, the second 2 minutes, eh? you continue the CPR and you treat the reversible causes. We are going to discuss the re reversible causes later. And another example, let's say again you have a patient, unresponsive patient, and came was brought to you, so you initiate your BLS again, you activate your DRS ABCD, and danger, you check for responsiveness, and if patient is not responsive, you shout for help, head tip chin lift, open the airway, scan for breathing, if there's no breathing, you start chest compression. So once the help come you attach the cardiac monitor and let's say the cardiac monitor shows vf immediately you resume chest compression while preparing for the shock once you are ready for shock then you give the first shock and depends whether you are using monophasic or biphasic then you say i'm clear you clear everybody clear shock shock given after the first shock, eh, you continue with chest compression, high quality CPR. And during that time, you don't have to intubate the patient. You just concentrate on the high quality CPR. What you may do is you insert the IV line and you uh, draw blood for investigation. Then two minutes up, you start top chest compression, you analyze the rhythm, the rhythm still VF, eh, immediately you give the second shock. I'm clear, you clear, everybody clear, 
shock shock given continue CPR okay so during that time after you give the second shock eh, you give adrenaline 1 milligram every 3 to 5 minutes again standard order is 1 milligram every 3 minutes and if not your assistant will get confused and during this time you intubate you intubate the patient and, and again after that you emphasize on the high quality CPR then the two minutes up eh, you stop chest compression analyze, analyze the rhythm feel for the pulse rhythm stills VF eh, you prepare for the third shock I'm clear you clear everybody clear shock shock given continue CPR and you continue your adrenaline and at this moment eh, you give your amiodarone eh, the dosage of amiodarone is 300 milligram slow bolus how slow is slow so basically you give uh, within one to two minutes or ideally uh, it should complete uh, before the two minutes uh, time up, up okay so at this moment uh, you look for the reversible causes uh, the H and T hydrogen ion hypoxia hypothermia hypovolemia hypo hyperkalemia hypoglycemia cardiac tamponet tension pneumothorax uh, pulmonary thrombosis means PE coronary thrombosis means acute coronary syndrome and you ask the family members whether the patient have taken any drugs and next when the two minutes up you analyze the rhythm if patient still having VF you give the fourth shock I'm clear you clear everybody, everybody clear shock shock given continue CPR then you give your second dose of amidarone which is 100 milligram slow bolus within one to two minutes so you must always ensure that your assistant are giving high quality CPR High quality CPR is push hard at least 5 cm depth and fast. Eh? The rate is between 100 to 120 per minute and allow complete chest recoil. Okay, minimize interruption in compression, avoid excessive ventilation, rotate compressor every 2 minutes. Eh? If patient is not intubated yet, uh, the ratio of chest compression and ventilation is 30 to 2 okay, you may use uh, antidal CO2 uh, to uh, look at the quality of the, the CPR okay, so after you intubate the patients uh, you must confirm placement and then you may use the waveform capnograph uh, to monitor the, your AT tube placement and once your AT tube uh, in place give one breath every six seconds with continuous chest compression uh, again the rate should be uh, between 100 to 120 per minute and the depth is between 5 to 6 cm And again, always look for the reversible causes. The pitfalls in ALS Mega Code is the participant always asks about the blood result. I suggest you start with asking whether is the IV drip running, any bleeding, any signs of dehydration, and you ask you ask your assistant whether. Uh, there is hypoxia ask whether the oxygen is connected how's the bagging any resistance in bagging uh, is any chest rise and only after that you ask for the result of BBG ABG to look for the acidosis and you ask for uh, abuse result or renal profile result to particularly look, look at the hyper or hypokalemia and of course, uh, you may check the temperature uh, to allow hypothermia. 
and then you look you need to uh, diagnose tension pneumothorax clinically uh, cardiac component back triad might not be helpful but you may ask for uh, ultrasound uh, to look at uh, for cardiac tamponade and the toxins is the history from the witnesses. After there is uh, return of spontaneous circulation and then you may want to keep the patient hypothermic uh, for 12 to 24 hours and maintain strict glucose control uh, between 4 to 6 millimole per liter and continuous clinical signs monitoring okay now we go to bradycardia and tachycardia in bradycardia uh, we need to assess the patient clinically and so by definition heart rate less than 60 is bradycardia however if the heart rate is less than 50 they might be brady arrhythmia so you assess clinically and you give oxygen first and you attach the cardiac monitor establish IV access and you perform the 12 lead ECG the most important thing eh, when you have patient with bradycardia you need to assess the hemodynamic stability and you can start from head eh, where the patient have altered mental status eh, as Oh, where is he, is he now? Eh, is it what time is it now? Eh, morning, afternoon? Eh, you look for altered mental status. And then you go from the head, eh, you go to the chest, ask whether he's having chest pain, whether he's having uh, acute shortness of breath, eh, indicates acute heart failure. And next, eh, you check the BP, whether there's hypotension, and you feel the peripheries, eh, whether it's cold. Eh? any evidence of hemodynamic instability you need to treat and eh? the first line treatment is atropine 0.5 milligram and you, you can give it up to 3 milligram and eh? it fails then eh, you can give dopamine infusion or adrenaline infusion and uh, in some patient uh, transcutaneous spacing might be helpful. Same thing when you assess for tachyarrhythmia. Again, heart rate of more than 90 is tachycardia, but if the heart rate is more than 150, uh, you should not think only about sinus tachycardia, but you need to think about tachyarrhythmia. Regardless of the rhythm, uh, you need to assess whether the patient is stable or unstable. The same question uh, as when you assess for bradycardia. Uh, you ask for uh, level of consciousness, uh, uh, time, place, person. Uh, you ask about that, uh, whether there is any altered mental uh, problem. Then you go downwards and uh, ask for chest pain, uh, shortness of breath. Uh, and then uh, you um, measure the blood pressure and then you assess the peripheries to look for clinical shock. If stable, then you may treat with drugs, example SVT, uh, you treat with adenosine first line, but if patient have contraindication for to adenosine, such as he has asthma, and then you need to go with verapamil. Okay, uh, in patient with fast AF, if patient having concomitant heart failure, digoxin might help. Uh, if not, again you may use verapamil. Okay, if patient have allergic to verapamil or any contraindication to verapamil, you may use amiodarone. However, in the presence of any evidence of instability, you need to synchronize cardiovert the patient. And don't forget to get the consent first, uh, followed uh, by 
uh, sedation eh, and analgesia before you cardiovert the patient. And we're going to go into that more details during the skill station. So this uh, the uh, American Heart Association 2015 guidelines recommendations. So during CPR, eh, you are allowed eh, to give high concentration of CPR. Eh, however, post CPR, eh, you need to titrate the FiO2 uh, with the aim of FiO2 uh, between 94 to 100. Uh, this is because recently they noticed that uh, hyperoxia, uh, meaning high concentration of oxygen, uh, is not good for the heart itself. There is no changes in the dosage of the adrenaline. Uh, still, we use 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes. So, how fast you need to give the adrenaline uh, for non shockable rhythms, means PEA or asystole? Eh, it's reasonable to administer adrenaline as soon as possible but for shockable rhythm eh, uh, you should uh, defibrillate the patient first before eh, you give the adrenaline eh. shock is more important than adrenaline in shockable rhythm don't forget you may use amandaron for VF and pulseless VT that is unresponsive to CPR and other choice is uh, lidocaine eh, as alternative to amidaron. Uh, remem remember after the third shock eh, in patient with pulseless VT or VF eh, we give amidaron bolus 300 mg eh, 1 to 2 minutes and after the fourth shock when we give amidaron 150 mg bolus 1 to 2 minutes the important aspect for cardiac resuscitation is basically high quality CPR so if patient have difficulty IV access then it must not stop your chest compression your chest compression must be continued you should not delay the chest compression and the defibrillation because you can't get IV access. So, uh, they also mentioned about focused echocardiographic evaluation in life support, uh, meaning uh, if there's a qualified sonographer and the use of ultrasound does not interfere with the standard cardiac arrest treatment protocol, then ultrasound may be considered as an adjunct to standard patient evaluation. And so during the pulse check, rhythm check, eh, you can put the cardiac probe eh, either on the center, on the uh, look for four chambers view, or short axis, or I prefer the probe to be on the sub z or subcoastal area. But remember, it should not interfere. I prefer the subzified or subcoastal view because it will not interfere with the chest compression. Basically, post return of spontaneous, spontaneous calculation, the take home message is no fever, please. And there is belief that contro controlling of the body temperature. Uh, at the 30, 36 degrees Celsius eh, would have some clinical benefit. So, in summary, effective AIS begin with high quality CPR, uninterrupted high quality chest compression improve outcome, early recognition and treatment of arrhythmia give the best chance of survival, search for treatable causes of cardiac arrest, post resuscitation period is important, Know your algorithms well. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.